Hey guys, welcome to your first iOS development tutorial. Hopefully this will be the first of many tutorials uh, in this subject. A lot has changed since I finished my Objective-C tutorials last summer. Like now we have Xcode and it is version 5.0.2 and I don't think I've used it since it was back in 4. And now we even have iOS 7 which is Apple's new sleek iOS. So let's get started and make a new project. Instead of our usual OSX command line tool, we're going to go up into iOS, choose application, and then single view application. Name it whatever you want. I'll go first tutorial. And create a save. So what's different from our command line tools is instead of just having a header file and an implementation file or just a main file, now we have all these right here. And basically these first two app delegate files don't really matter at the moment. It just is part of the program and how it loads and you could tweak it if you want, but it's more complex than you'd probably be able to do if you're watching this video. So don't touch this. And we'll skip the storyboard right now. The next is the view controller H and M files. And it's just the header and main files for this view right here. And this is what we call a view. It's just basically the view of your iPhone screen and the interface of it. So this view is the interface and it will be what our app displays. And right now, if we click run, it's just going to display a white screen. When you click run, it'll bring up this iOS simulator and depending on what device you chose your application to run on, it could bring up the phone simulator or the iPad simulator. But it really doesn't matter now. One thing that I don't like with Xcode 5 is the iOS simulator actually. They changed it from actually literally looking like an iPhone on your screen to becoming this. This silly little, like, it's just a window. And I don't understand why they would change it, basically degrade it from looking like an actual phone, just giving it the entire simulator feel to this window. And I could change it to whatever I want. I could go to window iOS simulator and I could choose like uh, the size I want so I guess I can make it bigger or smaller I just I don't like what they did now I have to go to this menu to go home and you can see it still looks like a phone and here we have our first tutorial and this is the this is the default icon for it is this uh, little grid thing but we can actually add our own picture and we'll probably do that in a later tutorial and right now you see we just have a white screen and that's because we've done absolutely nothing with this view so the first thing we should do is check out this right side of our screen and then we'll add stuff to our little storyboard view and basically at the top right here is just a few different tabs and the first three aren't are really just kinda information about the object itself uh, this one is just the identity here is quick help so it'll tell you a little about this object and that's actually really nice you could get quick help for bits of code keywords methods and objects so if you ever want to learn more about what you're using this would be the tab to go to and here is custom class don't really worry about this right now but this is a attributes inspector and we're gonna be using this a lot so the first thing we do to actually give this app a little life is we'll add a label to it. We click on label, come on, there we go. And now we have a little label on our application, but let's make this guy a little bigger. He's way too small, I can barely see him. And here's where the attributes inspector comes in play. We could change what's actually displayed on the label, so let's make this my awesome label. And right now it's uh, here, it's kind of to the left. I don't like that. So we'll align it to the center and we'll make it really big. Oh no, not that big. All right, there we go. We'll even change colors, why not? We'll go blue, that's very nice. That's kind of the 
iOS 7 blue, actually. It's their sleek little color. Actually, I want orange. Something like that, yeah. All right, and now we click Run again. It's going to take a second to build. And then once it builds, our little screen will pop up. Come on, screen. All right, screen, you're killing me. There we go. I've actually noticed that uh, the build times, not the build times for the actual project, but the loading of the simulator has gotten slower, even though it's a much uglier simulator. See, now we have a uh, My Awesome Label, which is great. Our application, we should just sell it to Apple right now for a million bucks. Get rich. But we could do a lot more with this if we just add a button. We'll add a button right below it. And we'll change this to change text. And so now this button does nothing, but we can make it do something. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this right here. It looks like a little bow tie and a dress shirt, actually. And it's the assistance editor. It's probably not supposed to be that, but that's literally what I see as a bow tie right here and the nice little dressy vest on the outside. And so now what we have on the left is our storyboard, but on the right we have our view controller dot M. And we don't want that. So what I use to navigate is related files and I'll go to recent view controller dot H. And so this is basically the interface for this. And so right now that this has nothing, so this interface is not even usable. So let's click on change text which is our button and we're gonna right click and drag it to right here and what this does oh first let's change this to action and we'll name it touch button oops button and we'll keep everything else the same uh, this type is just the type it is and we could change it to button because we know that the type will be button ID is basically the all-encompassing data type anything can be type ID. So we'll just leave it at that. And the event is touch up inside, which basically means the button was pressed. Argument sender, which means when the button's pressed, it will do something. And right now we're going to click connect. And this connects touching the button to this action. And we're gonna connect my awesome label, and we're gonna name it my label. Well, we'll just put label. Label, and it's gonna be an outlet, not an action because it's just it's connecting this to the interface but it's not doing anything it's just giving us access to it and it's of type UI UI label we could make it ID but since we're connecting it in an outlet way we we'd rather have it as UI label storage strong it can be weak but uh, you can look that up yourself it really doesn't matter for such a small application and so now that we did this we'll go to view controller dot M and so we have our action and our outlet and what we're going to do is see how this action showed up down here basically this is your method for when the button is pressed and when our button is pressed we want to change our labels text to something else so to call our label which we connected right here we're going to go in here and go underscore and then here's our UI label label I love the autofill of Xcode, it's just the best. And we're going to go label.text equals, let's make a string, and we'll say it, my extra awesome label, all caps with an exclamation point. And basically why we put this underscore here, even though we named it label, is because in uh, Xcode, the correct syntax for uh, calling instance variables is this underscore. This is an instance variable and it just means it's only used in this class. And this next method, well yeah, this next method that's acted on our label is dot text and basically it's saying we're, we want to access the text uh, value of our label and we want to change it to this string. And this at just means it's a character string. Uh, you have to do that for all strings basically to put them in text form and so let's try it now we're gonna build cool 
build succeeded. Awesome. Oh, and it showed up really quickly. Change text. Oh no. Well, it looks like we have a little dot 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 here. Our label didn't want to expand, but it worked. So let's go back to storyboard. Select my awesome label. And right here, see lines? This is how many lines your label can contain. And we'll go five just because I think that's enough for what text we want to use. And now when we change text, my extra awesome label works like a charm. So this tutorial was just a little crash course on everything that Xcode 5 has to offer. And in later tutorials, I'll go more in depth on different programs that we can create with this. So thanks for watching.